Saturday, next Saturday is work day, and that we start at 9 o'clock with that. You can come help. There's a, all kinds of stuff that needs to be done. Family day is next Sunday. A lot of people got confused about that for some reason uh, on the work day and family day, but it is next week. Um, then you can look ahead for April. Also, plug in April. Let me get the dates on this one. Brother Polly is coming in April.
Good morning. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of James. We're going to be chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 this morning. James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. It says, do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother... Or judges, or judges his brother, his brother speaks, speaks evil, evil against, the, against the, law, the law, and judges, and judges the, law. the law. But if but you if judge, judge the, law, the law, you are you not, are a, not doer a doer of the law, of the law but, a but a judge. There is only, there's only one, one lawgiver law and, and judge. He, he who, is who is able to save, to save and, to and to destroy. But who, but are, who you are you to judge, to your, judge neighbor? your neighbor? Would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Lord, we come to you once again this morning, Father. And Father, and Father, as it was prayed, prayed earlier, earlier Father, Father, I know it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's really, really easy for us to just, just fall into the temptation, the temptation to just, just do religious, do religious things, things on a day, on a day like today. Like today. And Father, Father, we pray, we pray that, that it would be, it would be authentic, authentic this morning. This morning. We pray, we pray, God, God that, that we, as, we as we are looking, are looking at, a, at a couple, a couple of, difficult of difficult subjects, subjects this, morning, this morning, that, um, that um, we would we think, think about our neighbor, our neighbor, our spouse, our, spouse, our friend, or, friend or, or, or those sitting on the other side, side but Father, Father, that we that would, we would truly, truly look internal, internal in, our in our hearts. Father, I Father, believe, I believe you've given your word to change us, to call us to righteousness, to show us the way to draw close to you, Father. And we pray, and we pray just now, Father, Father we'd be authentic, authentic in, our worship, in our worship and in our and hearing, in our hearing of, your of your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, so it starts, starts out, do not, do not speak, speak evil, evil against, against one another. One another. Now, now, what I want to start, start out this morning, this morning is, by is by talking about, about what, that what that doesn't, doesn't mean. mean. Now, this now doesn't, doesn't mean that there's, that there's not room, room for, correction for correction for one another. For one another. If, you've if you've ever been, been in a situation, situation where you've got to have an uncomfortable uh, conversation, conversation with somebody, with somebody uh, typically, uh, typically it's become, it's become a, a, a normal practice, practice in the church that, that we're so, so sensitive, sensitive that we that cannot, cannot be corrected, corrected by anybody, anybody anywhere. anywhere. And, if and if they do they correct us, then it's not loving, they're being legalistic, they're being like Pharisees. And, and but that's but not that's what it's talking, talking about, in, about this text. in this text. It doesn't, it doesn't mean, mean that there's not room for correction. In, in fact, in fact there, are, um, there are um, there are uh, uh, several, several examples, examples within, within scripture, scripture, scripture where we can where approach, approach somebody, somebody in correction. The Lord, the Lord Jesus, Jesus did, it did it himself. Where we can where approach, approach somebody, somebody uh, with, uh, with correction, correction and still be loving. Um, in, um, fact, in fact, it, it, it's, it's, it's not it's talking, talking about, about that. There's, there's, there, there is room, room for, correction for correction for one another. For one another. Correction, correction and speaking and evil, evil are two, are different, two different things. things. Speaking, speaking evil, evil may contain, contain bits, of, bits truth. of truth. I mean, speaking, I mean, speaking evil, evil might be all true. All true. But, but it's what, it's is, what the is, goal. is the goal. Is, is the goal, the goal of, speaking of speaking evil is to is harm and not to help. There are, there are people that speak, speak truth, truth, but they do but they not do speak, speak it out of love. Out of they, love. Speak they speak it, they speak they it, speak in, it evil. in evil. They, they come down, come down and, they and they are being, being legalistic. legalistic. They are, they are being, being judged. judged they're, they're not trying, trying to help. They're, they're not coming from a place of love. Of love. But, but speaking, speaking the, truth the truth in love, in love has, a has a goal of restoration. But speaking, but speaking the truth in evil, in evil or, speaking or speaking a lie in evil, in evil or anything, or anything for that, for that fact, fact has a goal, has a goal to, to divide. divide. James, James gave examples, gave examples in, chapter in chapter 3 about, three about taming, taming the tongue, the tongue and, this and this is exactly, exactly what he's talking, what he's talking about. about. Because, because if, if we, we don't, don't know, know when to keep, keep our mouth shut, shut about, about a subject, subject. If, we if we don't know, know the way to way approach, approach a subject, a subject why, do you why do you think earlier, earlier in James, James it talks, talks about, about if lack wisdom, wisdom? It's because we do lack wisdom. And there are times that people are going through something and people are having issues in their life or they're having Having a, having a struggle, struggle or they're, or they're tr having, having a trial, a trial it's, it's not, not always, always the time, the time for us to speak, speak up into, up the, into matter. the matter. 
There is, there a, is time a time and there is a place, place but, we but we just need, need to make, make sure, sure that, we're that we're coming into, into that, situation that situation at the, at right, the right time, time at, the at the right place, place and, from and from a place, a place of, love. of love. What is our goal? Is our goal to restore that person? That person? Or is or that is goal, goal to, to give that give person a piece of our mind? I'll just be real honest with you. There's been times that I would speak truth. But my, but goal, my goal was, was just to give, just a, to give person a person a piece of my, piece mind. Of my mind. Tell them Tell something, something that they, that need, they to need, need to hear. And it might and be something, something that they need to hear, to hear but you but might you not be the one they need, need to hear it from. It from. So he talked, so he about, talked about taming, taming the, tongue. the tongue. The first, the first example, example was, was he, he, he talked about putting bits into the mouths of the horses so that they obey us. And it says that we guide their whole bodies as well. You, you, based on, based what, on you what you say, say and the way, and the that, way you that you carry yourself, yourself and the way, and the way that, that you talk, you talk to, people, to people, like it, like or, it not, or not, that reputation, that reputation will, follow will follow you. We've all, We've all known, known those, those people, people that, that, uh, that, uh, we, that we, we, man, I, I, I hope they don't find, find this, out this out because I'm going to hear about it. Are there going to, or, 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 or have you ever, have you ever known, that, known person that person that you, that you, you can see them coming towards you and you know how that conversation is going to be? Just me? Just me? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not out, out here by myself, man. It's okay. You don't have to admit to it. I'll admit, admit to it. it. But you see, but you that, see person that person across the room or across the crowd, the crowd and, they're, and they're beelining, beelining towards you, and, and you know that's, that's not going to be a fun conversation. The second example that James used was he used the rudder of a ship. And how, and how this very small rudder will guide this big, big, Ship, ship based, based on, based the, on the, pilot's the pilot's direction, direction. and the third and the tragedy. tragedy. So now, so now he's, he's asking, asking you, you to put to your put tongue, your tongue into, submission into submission as you're, as you're in submission, submission to the Holy, to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Asking, asking God, 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 God give, me, give wisdom me wisdom on how to speak, how to speak into, into this situation. This situation. God, give God, me give wisdom me wisdom as to how, as to how I can lovely, lovely, lovingly, lovingly approach, approach this situation. situation. And we're, and we're, we're, we're just submit, submit what, we, what say, we say, and we are, and we are to, to submit, submit in the way that we way pray. That we pray. In, uh, verse uh, 3, it says, it says, you ask, you ask and you do, do not do receive, receive earlier, earlier, in, earlier, earlier in, the chapter, in the chapter because you, because you ask wrongly, wrongly to spend it on your passion to adulterous people. people. If you, if you were in here this morning and you want to have impactful prayer, if you're, if you're in a place, in a place where, you where you say, man, man I, 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 pray, I pray, but I just kind of run through the motions. motions. I, I, I pray before I, I eat. eat. I pray before I, I go to bed. I, I, I kind of find, find that, that, that I'm saying, saying the same things. things. I, don't I don't really feel, feel like, feel like I, have I have impactful prayer. prayer. And you really and you want really impactful, impactful prayer. prayer. Here's how you get it. You get your life aligned with God. You seek His will. And ask, and ask from, the, from, from, the, that, from that standpoint. standpoint. You, ask you ask from that, from that standpoint, standpoint, not from not the standpoint, standpoint which, we which we normally ask, ask but you ask, but you from, ask the from the standpoint of your, of your actual, actual will, will to, be done. to be done. And what and James, what James is, talking is talking about when he's, when he's talking, talking to, this, to, this, to these Christians, Christians and he's, and he's, he's talking, talking about, about their, their prayer, prayer. Stop, stop asking, asking for things, just to spend it on your passions. How many, How many times, times do we spend, spend time, time in, 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 the, in the little amount of time, time that we get to pray to, pray to God, God? All we're, all doing, we're doing, is doing is trying to ask God, God to make, to make our, our lives easier, easier or ask God, God to, give to, give this, to give, give me this or give me that, that or, 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 or make this, this go, go away. away. But when we align our lives with God, that's why people, why people use scripture, scripture and they try, and they try to, to say, well, it says, it says that, that if, if, if you if ask, it's going to be given, given to, you. to you. But there's but always, there's always a, caveat. a caveat. you got to ask, ask and it will be given, given to you as long as your, as your prayer, prayer is aligned, is aligned with, with what, what he has, he has willed, willed for you. And not, and not to spend, to spend it on your on passions. Submit your tongue. Or submit, or submit what we, what say, we to say to people. Now James, now James is speaking directly, directly to the way, the way that, that we speak, speak to and about, about other, believers. other believers. However, However this, this is a good, is a good practice, practice to take, take, uh, to uh, take to upon, upon ourselves, ourselves the way, the way that, that we speak, speak and, and talk to, to non-believers non as well. As well. 
Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 4, 11 through 15, 15 says, says, and he and gave, he gave the, apostles, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the shepherds that, and, and teachers to equip the saints, the saints for the work, for the work of, ministry, of ministry, for building, for building up, up the body, the body of, Christ, of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the, the, of the faith and of, and the, of the, knowledge the knowledge of the Son, of, the Son of, God of God to mature, to mature manhood. manhood. To the, to measure, the measure of the, of the stature, stature of, the of the fullness of Christ, of Christ so, that, so we that we may no longer, longer be children, children tossed to and fro, and fro by, the by the ways and carried, and carried about, about by, by every wind, wind of doctrine, of doctrine by, by human, human cunning, cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. schemes. Rather, Rather speaking, speaking the, truth the truth in love, in love we, are we are to grow, grow up, up in every way, way into, into him, him who, who is, is the head, head into, into Christ. Christ. We don't, we don't compromise, compromise the, truth. the truth. There have been, there have many, been many people, people that, in that in the name of love, love have compromised, have compromised the, truth. the truth. That is, that not, is what not what I'm talking about, about this morning. morning. We, don't we don't compromise the truth. The truth. But, rather, but rather, as it tells us in Ephesians, we speak the truth, the truth but, we do, but we do it in love. In love. This is an area, area that us that as us fundamental Baptists greatly struggle in. We don't struggle in the truth department. I mean, I mean, we, we want to make, make sure, sure that we've, that got, we've this got this right. right. And, we'll and we'll spend a lot, lot of time, time. And we'll spend, and we'll spend a, lot a lot of effort. effort and we'll put a lot, lot of money into, into getting, getting different, different, different things, things and all of these things. Because we want to make sure that we've, that got, we've got, the got the truth right. 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 But, it's but it's speaking it. We don't have trouble speaking the truth. Ever ask a fundamental Baptist what they believe about the Bible? I hope you've checked off your calendar. They'll tell you. We don't have we don't a problem, have a problem with, the with the truth. We don't have we don't a problem, have a problem speaking, speaking in the truth. In the truth. Now, now, if I can just, if I can be, just real be real honest with you, with you and if we and can if just we can be real honest with ourselves, ourselves the, one the one thing that we, thing do, that we struggle, do struggle with is, is speaking, speaking that truth, that truth in, love. in love. Sometimes, Sometimes we miss out on the love aspect. aspect. Sometimes, Sometimes we get, we get caught, caught up so much, so much in, the in the weeds of how, of how people look, look and the way people, way people talk, talk and the, and the things, things that they do and the things, things that they don't, that don't do, do that we that speak, speak the, truth, the truth and instead, and instead of, of preaching, preaching to people, people it, turns it turns out that we just preach at them. Growing up, I can remember some of the meanest people I knew were Baptists. It's just the truth. Now, I can, now speak, I can speak, I can speak candidly because I'm, I'm, I'm part of that crowd. crowd. I'm, I'm, I'm in it. it. And, I and I know it, but I know, but I know, I know, I know growing, growing up that if, that if, I knew, I knew, if we were going, going to visit a certain, certain church, church, there were just, just mean people there. people there. They were they just, were just mad. mad. And I can and say, I can say all, this all this because I am one. I want to know the truth. I don't, I don't want to know, know what man, what man thinks, thinks about, about the Word, the of, word God. of God. I want to know, know what God, God needs me to know about, about His Word. His word. I, don't I don't need somebody, somebody to translate it for me. I, I, have, I, have, I have a reliable, a reliable source, source of what God, of what God wants, wants me to do. I want to know, know the truth. I want to be able to speak the truth. truth. I want to be able to engage in conversation. But I want to be... Loving, loving in the way, in the way that, Christ that Christ was loving. Was loving. And if we and look, if we look at, at the way Christ, Christ was, loving, was loving, he didn't, he didn't shy, shy away from calling, calling people, people out on their, their sin. sin. He didn't, he didn't shy, shy away from, from speaking, speaking the truth. The truth. They, they crucified him, him for it. it. But he did, but he did it from a place, from a place of love. Of love. Us, us as true, true believers, believers of, Christ of Christ should be, should the, be the most joy-filled, joy-filled people in the, in, on the, on the entire, entire planet. planet. Because if because you've ever really thought about, thought about it, it, you think, you about, think about it, it that, that, that it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter what happens, happens today, today or happens, or happens tomorrow. tomorrow. If all, if all tragedy, tragedy strikes, strikes. People, people that are out here, here worried, worried about, about nuclear, nuclear warfare, warfare and all of these other things, we don't have to worry about that. Because the fact of the matter is, we're all going to die. But, uh, but for, for us, if we if truly, truly look, at, look death at death in the way, in the way that, that a believer should, should look at death, death is the very, very moment, moment that we that pass, we pass from, this from this life to that, that will be in the, will presence, in the presence of God. God. And we will and step, we will step into, into all those promises, those promises that we've that been, been promised, promised since the since day that, that we've that been, been saved. saved. See, we See, look we at it as a great tragedy, but it's not a great tragedy. That one, that of, one these of these days, days we, will we will be able to step, step into, the into the presence and be able, able to, to experience, experience all those things, things that we thought, thought and we dreamed, dreamed about, about and we read about. about. 
We should be the most most joy-filled people. people. I've jokingly, I've jokingly said, said that we, we, we sing, sing the song, song I've, got I've got the joy, 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 joy down, down in my heart, in my heart. But, then but then very accurately for some, some of us that song goes on to ask where, because some, some of us we have to ask and you don't, don't look look very joyful, you look mad. Look mad. We're, We're just, just angry all the time, we just sit at home and, and, and I just, and, 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 and if, if I'm not real careful, I'm just angry about the same things that the people that have no hope are angry about. I'm, 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 I'm angry, angry at the government. I tell you what, guys, you go back and study history, the government's been corrupt for a long time. In fact, it goes as far away back as the, as the Hebrews when they were saying, we want a king just like everybody else has got a king, and they were warned about that king. Because it wasn't the king that they were meant to have, but you know, sometimes Israel gets their king. And they, they, were, they were told that this is what this is what this type of government will do, and government was set up to take it to to thrive on the backs of its people. It's a reality. But we walk around with a scowl on our face, like we've got no hope, but we've got hope. And the craziest thing about it is we will sit around and we'll be at our places of, of employment and we'll be at the supermarket and we're ticked off and mad at everybody. And then how do you think it's going to come across when you talk to people about Jesus Christ and ask them if they want what you got? It's silly. And I'm not just saying that we stick our heads in the sand and we give this this fake smile and then we act like everything's okay all the time. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is in the grand scheme of things, at the very, if I if I have never have another good day in my life, eventually it's going to come to the end and I'm going to be in the presence of my Savior and every day is going to be a good day. That's the hope that I have. If we were to really look at Jesus and ask ourselves, what attracted the folks that he attracted to Christ? Why, did, why were they coming? Were it, was it the miracles? Perhaps, but the miracle seekers, eventually they fell away when things weren't happening. We can go out and we can promote, come down to Victory Baptist Church, and you'll see and you hear this a lot, signs and wonders, and we'll pack it out, I guarantee it. It was the same Jesus. Thomas said the fact of the matter was he wasn't deceiving anybody. It was really signs and wonders. But here's what happened is when the signs and wonders were not happening and he was all of a sudden teaching and telling them things that they didn't want to hear, what did they do? Well, they went off. What attracted people to Jesus? Was it his, his, was it his teaching? Perhaps. But many fell away when those teachings had what they called hard sayings. In fact, sometimes if you read about Jesus teaching and preaching, it's almost like there was times it was designed to run people off. Where it was designed to trim off all the fat because you need to really seek me. And I'm not talking about this morning the crowds that were attracted to Christ, but rather I'm talking about the ones whom their lives and eternity changed forever the day that they met Him. The ones who wouldn't fall away no matter what, even if it meant, and for many of them, it did mean for them to pay with their lives. The ones that sought Him through the hard sayings, sought him in the truths, sought him with all that they had. And that's what he asked for. You see, it wasn't all the things, all the other things. It wasn't the miracles. It wasn't even the teaching, but rather it was the love that he had for them. Why did Jesus attract the people that he had? It's because he attracted people who nobody loved. 
You have tax collectors that are going to this Messiah that is, he's teaching them and he's telling them things and he's eating with them and he's, he's having to do with them because nobody loved them. And all of a sudden he's showing them the, their love. And that's why he can go to them, speak the truth in love, and he changed their lives. He didn't, he didn't shy away from the fact that they were living in a life of sin. What was it that attracted the Samaritan woman at the well to Jesus? Was it the fact that he, was, uh, that he had done all these miracles? She didn't even know about that. Was it the fact that he had all of this following? She didn't know about that either. He was just at the well by himself. And even when he prophesies and she perceives him to be a prophet, what, uh, what, is, what does she talk about? She starts to talk about these religious things and whether we're going to, well, are we supposed to worship here? Are we supposed to worship there? You guys can't get it straight and we disagree. But none of that stuff is what attracted her to him. What attracted her to him was the fact that you have a woman that had been rejected for the most part of her life and was being rejected in that moment, and yet you got him not shying away from her sin, calling her out on her sin, but yet doing it from a place of love. And her reaction, how do you know it's authentic? Is because her reaction was to march right into that city in which she lived her life trying to avoid people and proclaiming, come meet a man that told me everything I ever done. Did she tell her, did she tell, did he tell her everything she'd ever done? No, but he did tell her everything that defined her, everything that she was known for. Every pain that she had, every bad mistake and bad decision and hurt and heartache, that's what he told her about. But yet he said that I'm offering you living, living water. Are you tired of thirsting? Yeah, she was tired of thirsting. Are you tired of hurting? Are you tired of the pain? Are you tired of the hopelessness? I will give you the living water so it will spring up within you and you will thirst no more. If you're tired of the hopelessness, if you're tired of going through the same motions day in and day out and trying to live this life, either trying to be good enough or if you're tired of trying to live this life and just trying to do what a lot of people do, is try to neglect the fact that there is a God and that I'm going to be I'm going to be accountable to him if you're tired of that he is offering to you this morning a spring of living water that will take all of that hopelessness all of that shame and he will replace it and he will give you mercy and he will give you grace you say am I going to mess up yeah you're still going to mess up but guess what it says praise God his mercies are new every morning why is his mercy new every morning? It's because we need it. We need his mercies to be new every morning. That's what attracted people to Christ. That's what attracted them to him. This is the way that Jesus loved. Not to get something but rather to give everything. How many ministries today are defined based on loving people or when in actuality all they really love is what people can do for their ministry? It's just true. Or how many are defined based on the fact that we have a religious experience for sale? Come down here, and as long as you're part of here, you're going to get that religious experience. And really, in actuality, all they're doing is trying to sell you an experience. People say, oh, you just get, you just get mad, or you just get upset, or you just get jealous because there's a lot of people. No, 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 no. I want the kingdom of God to grow. I don't care who does it. 
I don't care if at the end of my life I'm doing what God called me to do and I'm preaching to four or five people. It really don't matter to me. I am, I am really concerned with people getting saved, but I am really concerned about people being deceived and think that they're getting something and think that they're signing up for something because somebody stood in the pulpit and told them a promise that God never made. That's what I'm concerned with. Say, oh, well, you're just, you're, just being, you're just being a hater on that. I will hate that every single time. I will. We don't want to be defined by what we can get out of people. We don't want to be defined. I tell you what, before we, would, before we could be defined, as, the, as, as us as a ministry trying to get things out of people, I would rather worship in a tent, to tell you the truth. Now, praise God, we've got faithful people. Praise God, we've had faithful people. Um, I mean, just as far as I can remember, that we've been able, and God has blessed us, and we've been able to have have buildings and being able to do building projects and being able to purchase a bus and all of these other things. That's all great. But before we would be defined by, don't go there. They're just going to ask you for what they want. I'd rather be out there in the middle of the field before we're defined by that. I hope that our ministry here at Victory Baptist Church is and always will be defined by the fact that we sought to love each other and that we seek to love other people the way that Jesus loves us. Which leads me to my next point in that we're supposed to love one another. In, the fa in fact, Jesus said that in John 13, 35, he said, this is the way people will know that you're associated with me. It's not for your fantastic preaching. It's not for your apologetics and your vast amounts of programs and learning, but it's because you have love for one another. And my question this morning is, how do we speak evil against ones whom we really love? Back to verse 11 says, do not speak evil against one another, brothers. You know why, why we find it sometimes so easy to speak evil against our brothers or sisters in Christ? It's because we're not truly doing what Jesus wanted us to do. We're not truly loving one another. We're not truly loving each other the way that we're supposed to love each other. And the direct audience of James' of James's letter was they're facing some very tough times. They were having to fear suffering and some severe persecution. And the Holy Spirit through James is telling them that you need to be united and you need to love one another. The Holy Spirit through James is trying to get to them and tell them that I know that you're suffering persecution. I know that you're going through things and the only hope that you have, you have to stick together and you have to love one another. And obviously this doesn't mean that we can't lovingly correct one another. Every once in a while I need correction. Every once in a while there may be something that I'm too close to the situation that I can't see. But we need to speak the truth in love. We need to speak the truth in love to the world, but we also need to speak the truth in love to each other. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 says, Judge not that you be not judged. Now, a lot of people like to quote that first verse. Anytime that there, there are people that never pick up their Bible, never read their Bible, but boy, all of a sudden, if you talk to them about an uncomfortable situation, they've got a few there, uh, they got a few there in the chamber that they're going to pull out on you and they're going to say, Hey, see, right there says you can't judge me, you're going to be judged. Or with, they don't, they don't typically go on. They pick it up later on, but we'll see that. 
But for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. What is it saying there? It's not saying that you can't call people out, but it says you better be sure that you've got your own house cleaned up before you approach the situation. Goes on in verse 3, says, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? This is another favorite of theirs. But do not notice the log that's in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Many people use that passage whenever they're approached by Christian correction. They say, now, you you can't judge me. Don't say anything that I don't like. Don't say anything that comes off the judgment. Now, there's a problem that exists where our pride, we want to scream on the rooftops about the sins of others, but we want to whisper in the corner our own sins. You see, I could go on a circuit and I could go to just about every Bible-believing, God-fearing church in America and could get a ton of agreement and praise by preaching against homosexual sin. But I guarantee that I wouldn't get the same energy when in the same places and all the same praise if I were to go to those same places and preach against heterosexual sin. That's one of those things. We like to scream it from the mountaintops. That's not what I struggle with. But this is something that I struggle with. It's still bad, but we're just not going to talk about it. Why? It's because we may not we may not be directly uh, associated with a gay person, but we may be associated with a person that's shacked up. Reality. And that's why we're so sensitive to things because then all of a sudden we're guilty of cutting in and out and things that God said and all of a sudden we're trying to explain our way around it so it doesn't make us uncomfortable. But that is what this is designed for us to do. It's designed for us to look at this word and look at my life and say, if it doesn't match up, if it's not, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, even though everything in my flesh is telling me it's okay, it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but yet God's word is telling me that it is a big deal. Now, this passage doesn't say that you shouldn't address the speck in your brother's eye. That's how we take it. In fact, we take it like this. We say, okay, yeah, I may have a speck in my eye. You've got a beam or a log in your eye, so you just don't say nothing to me, and I won't say nothing to you, and then we'll just go on. That's not how it's supposed to work. It doesn't say that you shouldn't help take the speck out of your brother's eye, but it does say that you need to deal with your own things before you do so you can better help. Because we look at the speck as a, just, a, just a little sin. I don't have any of my eye experts in here this morning, but if, you, if any of you uh, know anything, you'll realize that if you get something in your eye, just a, it's just a little speck of this. It's just a little shard of metal. It's not that big of a deal. Or I knew a guy that he just got just a, it was just a, a li- he was weed eating and he just got a little speck of mulch. Just hit him in the wrong place in his eye and he lost most of his vision. It's just a little speck though. That's how sin can work. It's just a little bit. But if it goes unaddressed, eventually it can make things infected and it can affect other portions of your body and it can be life-changing. 
That's why, yes, we have a responsibility that if you have something in your eye, no matter how big or little it is, I want to help you get out of that thing, not because I want to be judgmental or not because I want to hate you or I want to be mean to you, but it's because I love you and I don't want, to, I want, I don't want you to lose your vision. But think about how ridiculous it is that if I were to, if somebody were to have a little speck of something in their eye and I've got this beam sticking out of my head and I say, hey, well, you, need to, you, need to, you need to trust me. I know, I know a thing or two about eyes and that thing's a big deal. You need to let me help you get it. No, it would be ridiculous and that's the same thing. We walk around pride-filled, puffed up, going, talking to our wives and our children and everybody like we're God's gift to the world, and yet we sit down and we try to help somebody on how to be humble? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But we should deal with the sin in our own lives so we can better help people deal with their sins in their lives. And let's just be honest about it. When you're approaching, there's nothing more powerful than when you are able to go to somebody and relate to them and say, you know what, I may not struggle with that sin, and that's a tough ordeal, but let me tell you what, this is something that I've struggled with. This is something that I've had going on in the past. See, Christians try so hard, a lot of us try to make uh, project this as though we live in a place of victory all the time, but you and I know that ain't true. talking about clean out your own closet before you go pointing that pointing out and calling out any and everybody else because when we deal with our own sin we're able to better help others deal with theirs I'm not your judge you're not my judge and neither neither one of us are the judge of the world we've not called been called to do that And neither do I have the right, the ability, or the qualification to judge anybody. But there's one that's coming that meets all that criteria. The one who came the first time as a suffering servant will come back the second time as priest and judge and king. So our responsibility is not to be the judge. You're not qualified. I'm not qualified. It's just not our job. Our responsibility is to get as close to Christ now and tell others that he's coming back before it's too late. Because people think, people will sit there and they read and they watch these movies and they think like, oh, Jesus, he seemed like a pretty humble and, and calm individual. So when he comes back, I'll just explain to him and he'll be, and he'll be understanding because then I've heard all of these nice little stories about him. But he came the first time as a suffering servant. That's not how he comes back the second time. And say, in fact, for all of these people that say that I couldn't believe that God would ever judge people, see the second time when he comes back and see when the nations all come together and go against him. And what does he do? He slays them with the word of his mouth. He came as a suffering servant. He came offering peace and mercy but eventually, if you reject him to the point, he's coming back, and he's coming back, and he's coming back as priest, he's coming back as king, and he's coming back as judge. And you've got an option. You can either be judged based on what you've done, and he'll do that. There are, many, there are going to be people that are punished more than others. I believe in that. I believe that the Bible, Bible teaches that there are going to be many stripes for others and few stripes for other people. So if you want to go based on the things versus the good and bad that you've done, you absolutely can do that. But that's not what you want. I want to go based on what he's done. I want to go based on his righteousness. I want to go based on the fact of I don't want any stripes. I want to claim the fact that he had taken the stripes for me. Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, we come to you.
Father, and I don't know the spiritual uh, situation of each and every person in this room. But, Father, you know. And the reason that you're equipped to be our judge, Father, is you can not only see our heart, you can see our motives. I can't tell anybody's motives. But, Father, I ask and I pray, God, and I plead that if there's one that doesn't know you today, Father, that if they're not 100% sure for a Bible reason that you are their Savior. Father, I pray, God, that they would get that shirt up today. That's the important thing. Father, because the fact of the matter is, I don't know when you're coming, but I know you are. And Father, I want everybody here, I want them to be ready, and I want them to be there with me. And Father, we are so grateful for you, Father, and we think of those that are not with us this morning that are sick, and just struggling, Father, we pray, God, that you would find your way to them and you would just comfort them. It's so frustrating when you're sick. And I know that the people that are absent this morning, Father, they, they're, they're not people that, uh, that are uh, not happy to go to church. But, Father, I, I, I think it, it's a real discouragement when we can't come together. But, Father, I pray, God, that you would meet them where they're at and you would comfort them, Father. And put it on our hearts that if we need to make a visit or make a call or whatever, Father. And we thank you for the technology that people are able to still be a part of the service. But, Father, we pray for those that are sick that you'll bring them to us. Because we desire that fellowship. We pray for our pastor, Father. That as he steps into the pulpit and preaches the, the message that you have given to him this week, Father. We pray, God, that we would respond, Father. That it, would, that it would really, truly rich our hearts, that we would desire more and more and more of you. Father, we thank you. I thank you for each and every individual here. We pray for the next service, even as the songs that we sing, Father. We pray, God, that we would, you would be the focal point for all of our worship and all of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Break time.